Hi everyone, it's Dr. Helen from Dorset Allergy. I've been a bit quiet of late, so I thought it was time to um, do some more um, videos, which hopefully you'll find helpful. And in this video, I thought I'd concentrate on the COVID-19 vaccination and allergies. And you may be considering like, well, why is that relevant anymore? Hasn't everybody had their vaccination or doesn't everybody know this information? Um, but sadly, there are lots of people who are still unvaccinated. And um, also we are hearing that potentially there may come a point where children under 12 are offered the vaccinations, um, particularly if they are clinically at risk. And so therefore those families, if those children have allergies, may well have um, questions that they need answering. And if you're an adult um, or someone 12 and older and you haven't had a vaccination, then from a GP point of view, I would implore you to really think about it. Um, I am still seeing lots of COVID. Um, I'm seeing people who are vaccinated still getting really ill, um, which is always quite worrying when they're in your age group. Um, and I am seeing people dying still. Uh, and those people are the unvaccinated ones. And um, picking up the pieces with those family members afterwards is awful. Um, so I really do implore you to think about it and um, read the science, really. Um, so... Currently in the UK, we have three vaccinations open to us. We have the Pfizer vaccination and the Moderna vaccination, which are mRNA vaccines. And we have the Oxford vaccination that some people know as the AstraZeneca vaccination. And when the vaccinations were first released, then you may remember, um, because it feels ages ago now, that several people had anaphylaxis. And because of that, because of concerns about what was causing the anaphylaxis and obviously the need to have this vaccination service go well it was advised that anybody who'd ever had ever had anaphylaxis didn't have their vaccinations in the first instance um, that information has now changed as it's been more understood and looked into as to what might have triggered that anaphylaxis okay so now anybody who's ever had anaphylaxis to food uh, or to say wasps and bees or to like the odd drugs, so a single class of drugs, say maybe like to penicillin or to um, ibuprofen, just a single drug, then you can absolutely have any of the vaccinations without worries. We used to say if you were concerns about um, anaphylaxis and allergies, then to have the AstraZeneca vaccination. But now absolutely, if you have a food allergy, uh, and have had anaphylaxis to that, you can have the Pfizer vaccination, which is the vaccination that we are tending to offer the younger um, people because of concerns about otherwise potential risks with the AstraZeneca vaccine and younger individuals. Okay, so please be reassured that if you have a food allergy and anaphylaxis, you can have any of the vaccinations. And just to reassure you, my own son who's 12, he's had previous anaphylaxis to milk, and he had his two Pfizer vaccinations, no bother, okay? Bit of a sore arm, but he was fine. Um, so with the Pfizer vaccination and the Moderna vaccinations, they um, contain something called polyethyl glycol, which we call PEG for short. And PEG allergies are very rare to say, and um, but often undiagnosed because they're quite challenging to diagnose. People who have a PEG allergy, generally would have had um, anaphylaxis to multiple classes of drugs. So proper anaphylaxis, breathing difficulties, airways issues, issues with the circulation or conscious level to, you know, lots of drugs, not just one class like penicillin. Or um, some of the biological treatments that people have um, for like arthritis, they may have had anaphylaxis to that, or they may have had anaphylaxis to cosmetics and household products. Um, then these are the group of people that we are going to be concerned about. Equally, because it's not often not always diagnosed, if you've had spontaneous anaphylaxis and, and you've never figured out why you've had anaphylaxis and the doctors don't know, then again, we're going to be just slightly more cautious with you as to what vaccination you're going to have. So individuals with those concerns, then it's recommended that you're referred into a hospital setting, so via the allergy service, and you would usually be offered the AstraZeneca vaccination in hospital and just observe for a longer period, say for 30 minutes. But the likelihood is that you'll have those, um, that vaccination without any problems. Now, some people with a PEG allergy also would struggle with the AstraZeneca vaccination because it's got something else called polysorbate 80 in it. And that is also contained in the flu vaccination that we would give the over 65s. 
So if anybody's ever had anaphylaxis to the flu vaccination, again, we're going to be quite cautious and we're going to be referring you into the allergy service to see what the right treatment is for you. So let's assume now that you don't fall into those groups and you had your first vaccination and you had a problem. OK, <clears throat> so if the problem was some sort of delayed reaction, so I have had people with um, various bits and pieces, maybe like a head headache that went on for a while, um, or a rash that took a few weeks to go away but did go away on its own or if you had um, maybe some hives or some swelling just appeared just where you had your injection um, that occurred after two hours um, then it's recommended that you could go on and have the same vaccination again um, and if you had like hives or swelling at the site then we would just watch you for longer so we're going to watch you for 30 minutes but in a primary care setting or a vaccination setting that would be fine um, for some of my patients where I'm might be a bit concerned about why you had your rash. Sometimes I'm covering with antihistamines, but if you're worried, then speak to your GP about it. For other people, if you had a proper reaction to your COVID vaccination, so you needed adrenaline um, or you had anaphylaxis, um, or if we're really not sure about what the reaction was, then we may well be, or we will be referring you to the allergy setting to speak about what that reaction was and to decide what the next steps are for you. OK, so for most people, you can go on and have any of the vaccinations offered without worry. Um, please be reassured for your child with food allergies, they can have the vaccinations without worry. Um, but if there's a history of multiple drug allergies or worries about a reaction after the COVID vaccination, then speak to your GP and we can refer you to the allergy service.